Nearly one-third of all high school students in America fail to graduate. One out of five adults read at or below a fifth grade level. In other words, they can't read Charlotte's Web. Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Carson, and as a pediatric neurosurgeon, I'm used to dealing with emergencies. As you can see from the preceding statements, we're in the middle of one right now. American education faces a crisis and an intellectual trade deficit. While students from around the world flock to our colleges and universities, our colleges can't find enough American students to fill educational slots for challenging technical fields. The United States faces a global education gap. We produce less than 40,000 U.S. engineers a year in this country. Compare that to China, which produces nearly 400,000 engineers a year. If we don't address the discrepancy soon, our position as the world leader will be in serious jeopardy. American college degrees offer passports for success in the global marketplace. Yet, American medical institutions no longer have the ability to attract the best and the brightest students. You can help solve the problem. America's secondary schools face a more daunting challenge. In one study, we ranked 21st among 22 industrialized nations with respect to math and science scores. The academic shortfall stretches from northern Maine to southern California, and two factors stand out as consistent causes for underachievement, desire and status. While the high school football player enjoys the role of a hero and the spotlight, the girl with an A in algebra hears taunts of nerd and geek and gets lost in the crowd. You can help solve the problem. I had a childhood dream of becoming a physician. However, growing up in a single parent home with dire poverty, a pathological temper, and poor grades seemed to preclude the possibility of me realizing that dream. Ben Carson's mother, Sonia, who only had a third grade education, challenged Ben and his brother to read two books every week from the Detroit Public Library and write book reports and she really wasn't able to read even though she required us to read two books apiece from the Detroit Public Libraries and submit to her written book reports. We thought she was reading them but she was just underlining things and putting check marks on them and making us believe that she was reading them but it had the desired effect. The boy once called Dummy graduated from Yale attended medical school at the University of Michigan. And at age 33, became the youngest major division director at the Johns Hopkins Medical Institution. As director of pediatric neurosurgery, Dr. Carson has pioneered amazing life-saving procedures, including, in 1987, leading the first team to successfully separate twins conjoined at the back of the head. Today, Dr. Carson continues to save lives. He also puts his energy into other vitally important endeavors. My wife Candy and I wanted to change the attitude of young people about academic achievement. In 1994, we started the Carson Scholars Fund in an attempt to reward young people for high academic performance and humanitarian qualities. We started giving $1,000 scholarships to students starting as early as the fourth grade who demonstrated superior academic performance and humanitarian qualities. The school of each Carson Scholar receives a trophy every bit as impressive as the state sports championship trophy. The scholarship winner receives a medal, attends an award banquet, and frequently attracts media attention. The Carson Scholars return to their schools as role models, encouraging others to strive for academic excellence. Our program began with 25 scholars. We now have more than 2,800 Carson Scholars in 16 states. We intend to recognize a Carson Scholar and place a recognition trophy in every school in every state in the United States. To do this, we must expand our programs far beyond our current resources. You can help solve the problem. 
Our children are our greatest resource. In the future, we need them to discover new energy sources, to solve the global warming problems, to discover the cures for many diseases. But right now, we're not on the course to do that. Here's how you can help solve the problem. Make a donation to the Carson Scholars Fund, which can include your name. Endow a scholarship at the school of your choice. Associate your organization's name with a scholarship or a reading room. Sponsor awards for a school district. It doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure out what will happen if we don't improve the motivation and education performance of our students. But together, we can do it. With the Carson Scholars Fund, students no longer feel they have to hide their academic accomplishments. It becomes cool to be smart, thereby motivating other students to achieve their best. Carson Scholars are role models for their peers. Teachers have told us that the GPA of the entire class goes up after Carson Scholarship has been awarded to one of their students. I am Maya Tagar. I'm a middle school and a Carson Scholar. When I grow up, I would love to be a doctor. I am Bonnie Tafiar. I'm a Carson Scholar. I am in medical school, and I'm going to be a doctor. I'm Justin Blazeniak. I'm a seventh grader. I'm a three-time Carson Scholarship winner. And when I grow up, I want to be an engineer. I'm Eric Davidson. I am a Carson Scholar, and I am an engineer. I'm Justice Hartley. I'm a sixth grader. I am a Carson Scholar, and when I get older, I want to be a biomedical engineer. I'm Russ Frisbee. I'm a Carson Scholar, and I am a biomedical engineer. 